Sitting with Todd Dobear, you're a partner at SNR Denton, global law firm. Yes. Y your specialty? Mobile services, technology. So, uh, you know, we hear a lot about mobile commerce. We certainly hear a lot about uh, trust in mobile commerce and mobile transactions. Uh, what's the perception of trust out there right now? Well, I think it's very interesting. The uh, MEF did a consumer survey, and in the U.S. market, trust was a major issue that's uh, really an impediment to the more widespread use of mobile commerce in the United States. There's a number of factors, but trust is certainly one of the big concerns in consumers' minds as evidenced by the survey results. Is trust the linchpin? What are the other factors that kind of contribute to, the, to, to mobile commerce? Well, so I think that uh, when it comes to technology, I, I'm an engineer by education and I love technology. <laughs> and I think that one of the issues that you need to address when you start to see widespread adoption of a technology is consumers need to be comfortable with it they need to understand it. Technology needs to serve their needs, even if they didn't know they needed it. It needs to make their life easier. And mobile has a huge opportunity in this field, and that's why you've seen it really expand right. with such a high penetration yep. rate. And so I think that for the United States, since we have such a heavily, you know, a population that's so served well by credit cards and banking, that you don't have that immediate need and the immediate you know, realization as to why e-commerce can change your life that you can in some of the developing markets. So I think that here people have the luxury of worrying about trust right. as opposed to forcing through because this is something they need to do anyway. So it's, it, it is really about uh, that fact that we are used to a certain level of, uh, of trust or a certain level of engagement with the people that we do transactions with that, that uh, you're right, certainly the developing nations or the unbanked don't have an option. Pretty that, significant. That's exactly right because we have many options here. So the more options you have to do what you need to do, the more trust becomes a factor. Which of these options do I trust more? Mm -hmm. What are the consequences of me making the choice to use mobile commerce as opposed to bricks and mortar going by the store. And I think that uh, it, mobile is particularly interesting because there are so many different factors that come into play with trust that you can't do it on your own. So if you're in the value chain for mobile commerce, um, you can do everything exactly right. And if either one of your business partners or even somebody you don't have a direct relationship or even other people in the industry do a bad job that damages consumer confidence, you'll be impacted just as badly. So it, it really highlights the need for organizations like MEF who can get thought leaders together, work together, work both within the industry and all up and down the value chain, as well as with regulators to say, here's how you can help us. Because the truth is we need help in weeding out some of the bad practices and maybe some of the bad players who exploit things. But we want to make sure that the government doesn't inadvertently make it difficult to roll out the very best of technology. Uh, you, walk us through that process because, um, you know, mobile commerce or mobile transactions, a lot of people get that <coughs> very confused with just kind of web transactions or the equivalent of a web transaction on a mobile device. Um, is there a difference there? What is it that we're struggling with? Well, I think that uh, people, frankly, are um, more comfortable with the desktop. They, it's been around longer. They understand it. They, they tend to use it. Well, actually, they probably don't understand it because... <laughs> they accept it. They accept it. Right. Because, you know, in many ways, the mobile device gives people the opportunity to have many more forms of authentication. So it could actually be much more secure sure. if it's done correctly. Yep. And so, um, you know, I think that once consumers start to understand this, it's, uh, it, it, it'll be a huge advantage. But underlying sort of this consumer confidence issue is this decision that we have to make as a society, both as consumers and as regulators, about whether some of this technology is a good thing or a bad thing. And you see the schizophrenia, right? On the one hand, the very best in services and the very best in technology that we can offer depends fundamentally on person-specific information, location-specific information, tailoring the technology to do what you want it to do even better than it could for anybody else. Right. right? It's crucial. Yep. On the other hand, you've got this deep concern that either the government or certain companies are out to get you know, you, or misuse the information they can get about you. you know, people are tracking me. So I think as a society, we really have to become comfortable with what's okay and what isn't. And I think that the choices that you see people make 
um, will differ on a generation basis. So a lot of these problems will shift as the population ages and as people get more accustomed to technology. Everybody has a price for convenience or for a discount. You know, it's crazy what people are doing today for, uh, you know, stamping their location for a discount at a store. And is that the instance here? Is it? Is it? How do you approach this concern over privacy and uh, and trust with with an average consumer? You know, are we going to see this being rolled out very systematically? That listen, I trust Sears or I trust Starbucks or Macy's, so I'm going to give my trust to them? Or is it going to be a broader play where it's, listen, I trust Visa, I trust the credit card companies, that, and uh, they have my back? Um, or is it, is it really going to be, you know what, I, I, I have complete faith, I'm a technologist, and I have complete faith that you're not going to mistrust or misuse my information. How does this, how does this roll out? Well, so I think there's really, <clears throat> there's really two aspects to that. One is um, consumers need to reach a point where consumers actually don't understand the true risks in technology. The things that they tend to worry about the most often are the least risky yeah. things. And the, they, it's the things that they see. The things that they right. see. Yeah. That's right. So I think people need to become comfortable of what are the negative consequences? What can happen to me if I choose to engage in this activity? And until people get comfortable with that, you're, you're going to see a certain set of consumers who just won't adopt. Yeah. You'll, you'll see others who will forge ahead. There's always people who are wanting to try the newest thing. But you'll see the, 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 the middle, the, the, the standard consumer, will hold back until they're comfortable with it. And you know, look at, um, at credit cards and what they've done with fraud prevention. Right. And you know, people have a sense that even if somebody gets their number, and charges it. As long as they're being responsible, they're going to get their charges back. Right. It's crucial. Yeah. Right. And so, if consumers start to become comfortable in e-commerce, and e-commerce is so much more than just a potential credit card replacement. It's really important to, to think of it that way. It's so much more than that. It's 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 not only about content, but it's about you know information and, and making it easier for you to engage with the world the way you wanted to anyway. And until consumers have a good sense that even if something bad happens, because bad things always happen, yeah. that, that they're going to be okay, you're going to see this hesitancy. Yeah. And you know, if we can parlay it back or, to the web days, it was the same kind of concern that happened in, during the web days. You know, a lot of people say, I'm not going to do online banking, I'm not going to buy anything online, right. you're crazy. Lo, lo and behold, you know, one of the biggest companies on the planet is an e-commerce based company in Amazon. So you know that transition happened over a period of time, but there were there were there were some breaches along the way, big breaches yep. where people's credit cards were compromised, and and um, and we haven't had one of those yet in the mobile space where it's listen this this happened as a result of of, uh, of a mobile some somebody penetrating or, or uh, getting into a site or a, a device, um, but that's coming, isn't it? It has to come. It has to come, at some, some degree or another. It, it, it has to come. Now, is it better that it happens sooner rather than later? Or is it, is it better that you, kind of, we get over that so we can, we can get beyond it? Or well, so it would be... It's uh, a challenge. To it, 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 it is a challenge. Right now, like, it sounds like a question like chicken pox. You know, yeah. Should I get, them now get my or, kid yeah. infected with chicken pox? Yeah. Or they, you know, the answer is you know, we'd, we'd rather not have any breaches. We'd rather yeah. not have anything. What will be key is how people react to the breaches how we handle it. The reaction is actually far more important than the timing mm. or the scope. And I think that it's really important that um, you know, it's very difficult for regulators to keep up with technology. And I think it's important for us as an industry, for everybody along the value chain, to sort of bring the government along with us as we go so that you don't wait until the end when you need something yeah. and then you're trying to go in and say give me this because right. of X and they haven't understood where you're going because I think that very good intentions can actually block some of the best technological advances. Sure. And, you know one of the examples I think of is VoIP, is a you know, nomadic VoIP services, voice over internet protocol. And um, you know those services had the capacity to fundamentally change the way we communicate and the FCC, with, with the best of intentions, required there to be 911 services right. associated with it. Yeah. And it killed and it off. stifled it. It, it stifled it. Yeah. It's dead. Yeah. And um, so now what you see mostly um, for, for retail uh, voice over internet protocol, you see price competition, yeah. which is actually the least interesting aspect of the technology. Yeah. So I don't want to see that happen with e-commerce. I don't want to see 
the innovation, the creativity, the convenience, everything we can do for consumers to be stifled out of the best of intentions from the government. Perfect. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time, Todd. Thank you. It's a great job.